screen would be valuable. There you yeah, are. Yeah, it's just uh, my system's a little slow, unfortunately. So um, yeah, thank you very much for having me here on this uh, this important day of resilience modeling and resilience engineering. Um, uh, I uh, uh, I've been working with the Resilience Systems Working Group for a couple of years now, and uh, I, I think that uh, that system dynamics, which is what I do, I use for modeling uh, systems. Uh, can be useful for resilience modeling uh, because it, it handles uh, behavior over time and resilience uh, can often be thought of as recovering from an adversity as we've heard today uh, and and that can take time. Uh, so I often will present <laughs> at, at these uh, meetings uh, some system dynamics models um, and uh, and, and John Burtis challenged me. Uh, he said, uh, you know, well, this is all well and good. System dynamics uh, can be useful. But how does it integrate with SysML and MBSC? Because, you know, uh, that's the languages that systems engineers are using and, and know. Um, and maybe they don't know system dynamics and, and the languages that system dynamics uses. So I, I put together this short presentation on the integration of system dynamics and, with SysML and MBSC. And I, I hope, hope I can show how, how it might be useful for resilience modeling. Uh, but one thing I, I must note before I start is it's a very short presentation. <laughs> because basically it hasn't been done. Uh, at least it ha one, one of the issues I, I have with talking about system dynamics to systems engineers is it gets confused with the term dynamical systems. And so uh, uh, there, it's, not, it's not really the same thing. Uh, and so um, most of the work in terms of uh, 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 of SysML and MBSC has been incorporating simulation for dynamical systems. Whereas system dynamics is, is something different uh, and, and I'll get into that uh, in a few minutes. So with that, uh, that apology uh, that I, that there's just not a lot been done here. I'll continue and talk about hopefully what would interest people uh, a, a, in terms of possible future research and development. So one of the things we talk about, you know, I'm very active in the system dynamics community. I'm a member of the system dynamics society. And one of the classic things that's always said about systems in the system dynamics society is that structure determines behavior. So uh, they believe uh, that when a system is built, um, its behavior, well, basically system dynamics is a, is a deterministic methodology. Uh, and basically it suggests that when you build a structure, its behavior uh, will be determined in various uh, scenarios. So for example, let's say you build a structure uh, and, and, and even before the adversity hits, you, you could maybe predict what the behavior would be when that adversity, adversity hit. Um, so, um, uh, so, so like I said, it's important to, to to, to think about things in terms of structure. And then as, as, as I'm saying before, um, resilience is, is about the behavior of a system after an adversity or, 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 or before an adversity. Say, say you build a structure that can avoid a diversity, adversity, then you end up with a, a behavior that's maybe uh, more desirable. So uh, keep in mind, that's, that we believe in system dynamics, that structure determines behavior, and that'll help you understand, you know, where I'm going with this with this presentation, and uh, and how I think system dynamics 
can can be helpful for resilience. So I'm going to talk. I have a quick introduction, and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about SysML and MBSC, and how it can be used to uh, to develop a structure of a system. Uh, I'm not an expert in SysML or MBSC, so um, I'm, I, I can't really speak to this. You guys probably know know it better than I do. Uh, but uh, but this is my impression: is that using tools like SysML and MBSC we can develop the structure of a system. Uh, and, and then system dynamics, uh, which I know more about, is about behavior over time. So uh, so that's where I'm coming from, is that SysML and MBSC uh, can de determine a structure. And then if we can incorporate system dynamics with uh, the structures developed in SysML and MBSC, we can determine the behavior of the system uh, when, 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 it, when hit by an adversity. So then the question is, you know, can we integrate uh, system dynamics and SysML? And as I said, you know, there's been some work uh, on integrating SysML with dynamical systems, uh, but I don't think that is quite the same thing as integrating SysML with system dynamics. Um, there is there is definitely commonality, and then I'll talk about resilient system design and the benefits of the of the integrative approach, and then I'll have some key takeaways. So, introduction very simply, you know. Uh, uh, Ken, Ken talked about complex systems and resilience, and and, and this is where uh, I, I think it's important to model system structure, and and then and then using that to try to uh, uh, predict behavior over time, and resilience, as as has been said many times today, is what I what I'm sort of talking about is adapting and recovering from adversity, which is you know part of the resilience uh, definition. You, you can also uh, build a structure that can avoid adverse adversity, which maybe is is the, the, the ideal situation. And so the purpose of this presentation is to uh, explore the integration of system dynamics with SysML and MBSC and emphasize uh, how this integration can be used in designing resilient systems. So just a refresher on SysML and MBSC from my point of view is uh, SysML, Systems Modeling Language, is a standardized modeling language for systems engineering, and it uses diagrams, a block, di block definitions, internal block activity and sequence, et cetera, diagrams. So basically it's diagrams. Uh, it, it, maybe there's more to it, but that's the way I see it. And MBSC, model-based systems engineering, is a shift from document-centric to model-centric approaches. And basically, it it, it 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 takes these. The way I see it, it takes the diagrams and turns them into um, computer-readable uh, and computer-savable uh, documents. And but they're they're now also uh, can be used to develop a, a model-centric view of the system. And hopefully, with this model-centric view, we can enhance communication and and reduce errors because we can do uh, much more automated error checking with an automated system than we can maybe with, uh, with diagrams. Uh, so then uh, system dynamics, um, uh, this, is, this is the way I explain it. Um, basically, it's differential equations, highly interconnected system of differential equations solved using numerical methods. So uh, it, it tells you where you are today, how you got there, and where you're headed if nothing changes. So, so for example, you know you could you could look at it as as behavior over time, where you know let's say everything is going fine. And then an adversity hits, and that's and so you say this is how I got here. This adversity has hit, and this is where I'm headed if nothing changes. And so hopefully you can uh, recover from the adversity if you have a, a good a good system structure. 
and it uses feedback loops, stocks, flows, and time delays. So uh, that's the tools of system dynamics, and, uh, and I'll, hopefully I can explain a little bit more about that later. But anyways, what I'm talking about is uh, the need for integration of SysML and, and system dynamics. So the challenges are that, uh, that SysML and MBSC may capture the structure, but not the behavior. And the advantages are that if we can integrate SD with SysML, we can get a holistic view about both the structure and the behavior of the system which of course I think would be very helpful for resilience modeling. Okay, so now uh, I'll do a, a quick little mapping of system dynamics and the elements of SysML. Um, sys system dynamics as stocks and flows. Stocks are accumulations or state variables of a system and flows are, are the, the the ways that, that the system changes states. So these are, these are continuous variables in system dynamics. Uh, in other modeling tools like Markov chains, you can have uh, more discrete and probabilistic ways of doing it. However, uh, I, I, I like to use uh, the simplicity of, of these continuous variables to, to approximate uh, the more discrete uh, types of, 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 of behaviors. Uh, anyways, you can map maybe uh, stocks and flows into blocks and activities in SysML. And then there's feedback in, 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 in system dynamics because system dynamics takes a feedback perspective on behavior. So basically feedback is the idea that that something changes and it filters through the system and, and, and ends up coming back to where it started and creating either uh, more of the same or less of the same. And more of the same is a reinforcing feedback loop and less of the same is, uh, is a balancing feedback loop. So the balancing feedback loop is sort of seeking a goal or we're trying to, um, uh, trying to balance the system but it can also be oscillation in the system. So for example, maybe, maybe you don't ever actually get to uh, a steady state, like in a goal seeking behavior, but you end up with oscillation and you end up going back and forth around some average value. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and positive feedback exponential is just generally exponential growth or exponential decline. So, um, uh, so, so those are the basically two two concepts uh, that are used in in system dynamics, and and basically all models are a combination of feedback loops of various degrees of strength. So sometimes the, the reinforcing loops are are more important, and sometimes the balancing loops are more important. Generally, every system is is dominated by balancing loops uh, if it's if it's well if it's well built. Uh, if, if if there are reinforcing loops that take over, that generally leads to catastrophe, uh, an explosion or, or or something like that. So, anyways, uh, now looking at looking at that from SysML's point of view, um, there's dependencies and control flows in SysML that we could use to um, to model. Uh, feedback in 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 the, in the ideas of system dynamics and then and then as i said system dynamics is implemented using uh computer programs that use uh differential equations uh basically um to solve uh these uh these continuous functions uh, and then and you could do something similar with parametric diagrams in sysml uh, and now, now I understand that I, I have talked to people who, who who claim that they have built system dynamics models in SysML. Uh, I, I don't think that's very common. However, what is more common is to have sort of uh, add-on systems to SysML, and two of the 
most common add-on systems to SysML uh, that could be used to build system dynamics models are Modelica and Simulink. And, uh, and I have a couple of papers at the end of this presentation that talk about uh, how these how these two tools were used uh, to do, I think, dynamical systems with SysML. Uh, but but there's also I've seen papers I, I don't I don't think I have any references to them here, but I have seen papers talking about how Modelica and Simulink could do system dynamics, but I don't know if I've seen if if, if I can find any papers that integrate that approach with SysML. You know, basically what they say is yes, we can do system dynamics, but they don't necessarily say how that can be integrated with SysML. And, and that, I think that's a great opportunity for future research. So, uh, okay, as, as I said, uh, and as we heard already, uh, the, so resilience is the ability to avoid, withstand, and recover from disruptions or, 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 or adversities. And, and modeling resilience, uh, the, way I, the way I see that the benefits here is that SysML could be used to identify vulnerabilities and design mitigation strategies uh, basically uh, to 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 work with avoidance uh, or 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 recovery um, uh, of, of from ad, from adversities or or vulner and basically by by trying to identify vulnerabilities we can maybe design those out of the system uh, or or mitigate any problems if those vulnerabilities are activated so SysML, I think, is is a fabulous tool for designing the system and, and it is useful for uh, avoiding things before they happen or recovering from uh, having a system that can recover. Uh, and then what system dynamics can add to this is that it can actually simulate adversities and adaptation and recovery processes to to basically validate uh, and verify that the the system developed using SysML will actually perform it under adversities the way it's expected by the designers. So the benefits of the integrated approach is that, as I said, uh, if we can if we can integrate system dynamics and SysML. Hopefully, we can combine both the structure and the behavior perspectives. And, and, and by doing that, we can get a better prediction of system behavior after an adversity. Uh, and hopefully, again, you know, we can build confidence with stakeholders that this system will, will, will not fail catastrophically when hit with an adversity um, and, and, and will hopefully build uh, confidence that um, that uh, that our design is correct, uh, and uh, and and maybe uh, going uh, to be reliable and and uh, and effectively carry out the the function. Uh, we have some challenges with this, as I said. Um, the, one, one of the problems is tool compatibility and interoperability. Uh, I, I, I've, I, I use um, system dynamic software that is very difficult to work interoperably with SysML, unfortunately. Um, and uh, I'm not familiar, I'm not that familiar with Modelica or Simulink, but I think, as I said, you know, those are the tools that people are drawn to. Uh, to, to, to do dynamical systems, and I think they've been shown to be able to do system dynamics. So I think those would be the best approaches to do this integration. Uh, and so there is a, a, a tool compatibility with Modelica and Simulink and SysML. So basically, I think that's the way to go. Uh, and then and then, of of course, you know, uh, there's a need for validation verification. So so basically, if you build a model uh, in Simulink or 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 Modelica, um, 
you have to verify that it, it truly represents the, the the system designed in SysML. But that can be a, that can be a great benefit. You know, basically by 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 building uh, this model um, in uh, in the system dynamics language, you can validate and verify that the system designed using SysML will perform as expected as on on specs. Uh, however, as I said, this requires knowledge of multiple modeling methodologies, and uh, I think you know there is often uh, people who who uh, are, are 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 maybe you know uh, familiar with one thing and and, and have difficulty uh, seeing the value of things outside their area. It, like for example, even myself, you know. Uh, I, I, I often talk about the idea that, you know, if someone asks you to model something and asks you what language to use, uh, the idea that I always recommend is use the language you know. Uh, and so I, the languages that I know for system dynamics are not very compatible with SysML. So if I want to actually integrate uh, system dynamics with SysML, I'll have to learn Modelica and Simulink, one or the other, and maybe both to uh, to do that integration properly. Okay, so these are the key takeaways. Uh, as I said, it's a, a short presentation, uh, but hopefully we can have some discussion. Um, the importance, or I, I want to emphasize the importance of integrating system dynamics with SysML. Uh, I, I think it would be a, a great thing to do. Uh, however, uh, I think it, 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 it's, 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 it's basically, from what I've seen, looking at the literature, it's, it's, it's primarily an area for future research. Um, and, it, and, it can, and it can be very beneficial. I think as the system dynamics, as I've shown, in my presentations to the Resilient Systems Working Group, system dynamics can be very beneficial to uh, designing or to validating uh, systems to make sure they're resilient. And SysML can be very valuable for designing resilient systems, as we all know. Um, and then, and so what, basically, what I want to do is encourage the an integrated modeling approach. And, and I encourage us, and, and if anyone's interested in working with me uh, on, on some future research, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to develop a paper on this for uh, the IS 2025 or possibly a future IS. Um, and uh, maybe what I can do this year is scope out uh, an area of future research and possibly you know, build a research plan uh, over a number of years to actually accomplish that. So if anyone's interested in this work, um, yeah, feel free to contact me and, and maybe we can work together uh, on a paper for IS 2025. Also, just to highlight, um, uh, I'm in Canada and IS 2025 is in Ottawa, Canada. So I'm very interested in going to IS 2025 and presenting. So that's my present. Here's some references, uh, just a few. Uh, and like I said, there's really not that many. So these are th these are the ones I found with a quick search. Uh, and then uh, I I'm open for questions and discussion. We have about six minutes on uh, Ivan's schedule here to answer questions. Looks like Tony Lacasse has a question. So yeah, just a couple comments on, on on the MBSC. So MBSC is designed to model the, the requirements, the structure, the performance, and the behavior of a system, and, and that could include system of systems. But MBSC itself, including SysML, are both temporally and spatially oblivious. Um, so uh, it, it's not really. Uh, geared for handling uh, the kinds of things that you want to do. Now, in Magic Draw, they do have a, a simulation, uh, the simulation toolkit, where you can uh, simulate the uh, behavior of the system, uh, given a canned set of, uh, of inputs, 
Uh, but that would still be that would be still at the performance level uh, where you're doing an engagement analysis bet between one or more things. The external inputs that you're getting, which you're getting from an adversity, which is something that's outside your system, is not included in part of the um, as part of the uh, uh, larger effects that you're going to get in an operational environment. So while you can characterize your system dynamics uh, with that engagement level analysis at the performance level, you're not going to get the full effect of the operational environment because it's not doesn't have the inputs to feed the um, to feed the simulation uh, that is provided natively within the magic draw or within the SysML. You would need a larger uh, overarching simulation that you could plug that simulation into, uh, like STK or, or AFSIM or some other simulation that captures the environment and the, and the interaction between your system uh, through, the, through its interfaces with the rest of the things that are out there that are impacting what's happening to you. Um, so um, there are tools that could help you kind of do that. Um, again, STK is one of them that Magic Draw owns both tools. So they have the, the tools that enable that to happen. Um, but by and large, uh, it's, it's not an easy uh, plug-in thing that's gonna happen to you. Yeah, yeah. well, um, you know, I, maybe, uh, you know, may, maybe, maybe this, this these papers I've seen on Modelica and Simulink are over advertising their capabilities, uh, uh, but uh, you know they, they they do claim to be able to uh, simulate uh, and integrate with uh, SysML, um, uh, mm -hmm. but um, but but uh, you know I haven't done it myself, so I don't know how difficult it is, um, and uh, I only I've only you know read about it theoretically. And, and and I think that it, it like I said it is it is an area of research. It's not a it's it's definitely not a, a, an area of um, of practice. So, so uh, I, I've had I've I've seen the Simulink uh, demo uh, where where the, those guys have uh, um, the the MATLAB guys have uh, demonstrated their capability. They're they're overstating some of some of their capabilities in terms of their relationship with SysML. Well, you know, another thing that I, I tell people uh, that I work with, you know, I'm, I'm a mentor in system dynamics and uh, people often say, you know, well, can I, can I do this in system dynamics? And, and I often say, well, you know, maybe, maybe you can't do that easily in system dynamics but if you generalize it to just programming uh, i think in terms of modeling and simulation you can do anything you want so if you if you think about it as a programming task uh, i i think that um that that that, that you basically um the the, the 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 field is wide open and and uh um and any almost anything's possible from a programming perspective, but maybe not in in a particular uh, environment or language, um, it's not so straightforward. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Tony and Ivan. By the way, John Burtis has his hands up. John, what is your question? I wanted, yeah, I'm off. Off mute. Uh, yeah, Ivan, I, I wanted to offer up that uh, at the West Western States Regional Conference that was a couple weeks ago, uh, there were a couple dem couple presentations on um, MBSE. Uh, one of them was went deeply into the use of Magic Draw, which is uh, a representation of uh, of uh, SysML. But yeah, to the best of my knowledge, SysML wouldn't know a, a differential equation if it bit it. <laughs> um, but the people who were demonstrating magic draw, and I, unfortunately I'm looking through my notes, I can't find exactly what it is. They claimed that magic draw can now 
integrate with very robust physics-based modeling systems. And if there are physics-based modeling systems, you know very well they can handle differential equations and feedback loops. So there might be a reason to be optimistic that some of the new, uh, let's call them bolt-on uh, systems and libraries for Magic Draw might be able to add the capability you're looking for. I will go through my notes and try to find exactly what tool they were talking about, but they made it sound rather, uh, rather good. Well, the obvious tool is artificial intelligence, which Bill Scheibel wants to talk all about. Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about artificial intelligence. It's, uh, however, I would talk about life cycle modeling language, but I, that's a different topic. I guess I'm kind of curious about all this because in my little fetal, feeble brain, I'm looking at MBSE much like I used to look at a huge, a huge cabinet full of blueprints. And I keep thinking that somewhere MBSE is going to be able to a tool, a program is going to be able to hold all of our requirements and have all the interrelationships. And out of that, we could do a fair amount of work on resilience understanding the resilience of our particular system, if that makes sense. In other words, yes, we're not there yet, by the way. I know we're not there yet, but that's kind of like, I think we are where we ought to be going. And it seems to me that even with systems dynamics and trying to tie this stuff together, we're not, we're ended up with some really good looking blueprints that don't tell us anything. Over. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that the, that's, that that's key to, uh, to my argument is that, um, you know, we, we, we do a lot of work on these things and, you know, we, we, we should really squeeze as much information and results out of all this work as we can, you know, mm -hmm. torture this data until we get the results that we can find useful. Uh, don't, don't just, uh, don't just store it, you know, uh, basically, um, you know, analyze it and, 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 and exploit it. Yep. So, so that's, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. It, it, now, it, and, it, yeah. and that's kind of to Ken's point. Maybe AI on the backside will start helping us do that. Not that I believe it, but at least it, it could start making those correlations and connections for us over. Yeah, I am. I am working with uh, an AI fellow um, on uh, an engineering project for um, the um, the construction of uh, electrical trains for computer commuter service in Toronto, and he is analyzing very large documents with AI to come up with requirements and constraints and stuff like that. And so he's uh, he's he's basically starting the process of developing AI for engineering. A large project like this, and uh, wow. I, I'm hoping I'm hoping we'll be doing some really good work in the next year on that. that Very good. Exciting. Well, folks, in the interest of time, I should do the wrap up now.